Hey guys, so as I promised in class, I'm making this video to hopefully help you guys kind of get a handle on these cranial nerves. I'm sure you guys have realized there's a lot going on with this, so I'm going to do my best to make it as easy as possible. For the test, you're going to need to know the Roman numerals, you're, gonna, you're going to have to be able to recognize what they are, and you're going to have to be able to write them. So, because sometimes he will say, write the Roman numeral for the hypoglossal nerve, and you'll have to be able to write cranial nerve number 12 in Roman numerals. So make sure that you, you can do that. You're also going to have to be able to name the nerves. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Just be able to name them. And you're also going to have to be able to know what these nerves do. And you're also going to have to know what portion of the brain they come from. So it sounds like a lot, but like I said, I'm hoping this video will help you kind of get a handle on it a little bit better. So here we go. All right, so the first cranial nerve that you're gonna need to know is cranial nerve number zero. Now remember, this one isn't an official cranial nerve, but Andy includes it, so you do need to make sure to know it. So cranial nerve zero, the nervous terminalis is its official name, deals with the detection of pheromones. So it's closely associated with the vomeronasal organ. So to remember this one, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your hand and you're going to make a zero. And what I like to do is I like to pretend that I have a beaker full of pheromones. It's kind of a weird visual, but just run with it. So you're going to pretend that you have a beaker of um, pheromones and you're going to bring it up to your nose and pretend like you're smelling it. Like, you know how you always see the scientists see it? So yeah, pretend like you're smelling the pheromones. Can't you smell that smell? The next nerve is cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve. This one is a purely sensory nerve and it has to deal with your sense of smell. So what you're going to do, cranial nerve number one, you're going to take your finger and you're going to pretend to pick your nose. Don't actually do it because that's disgusting. But take your finger, pretend to pick your nose to help remember that it's cranial nerve number one deals with your sense of smell. Cranial nerve number two, the optic, has to do with sight. Again, this one is just a sensory nerve and it has to deal with visual information. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your two fingers and you're going to point at your eyes, kind of like how you do that, like, I'm watching you thing like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to point at your eyes and you can do this if it helps you remember a little bit better, but it helps remember that it deals with visual information. Cranial nerve number three is the oculomotor nerve. And just like it says in the name, it's solely a motor nerve. So what you're going to do for this one, there's two ways to do this one. You can either point at your fingers like you did, point at your eyes like you did in the last one, and then you can take your third finger and move it around to help remember that it's oculomotor. It deals with moving the muscles of the eye, both intrinsically and extrinsically. Or what you can do is you can point at your eyes and then kind of like they do at the doctor's office, you can take your third finger and kind of move it around. You can also move it forward and back because the oculomotor nerve not only innervates the muscles around the eye that move it, it also innervates the muscles inside the eye that help with um, dilating and constricting the pupil and also it helps you focus your field of vision. So oculomotor nerve, number three, oculomotor. For cranial nerve number four, the trochlear, this one's kind of weird. What you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers and you're going to make little loops and then you're going to put them above your eyes because the trochlear nerve deals with a muscle that goes through a small ligamental loop at the top of your eye. So the muscle goes up and through like a pulley system and it attaches to your eye and what it does is it pulls your eyes la down and lateral. So on either side, so down and lateral, that's what the trochlear nerve does, is it innervates this muscle. And like I said, it goes through a ligament loop. That's what you're making with your fingers, is this little ligament loop that is rests on the top of your orbits. And so you're going to do that to remember that it's the nerve that innervates the muscle that goes through that trochlear um, ligament. Cranial nerve number five, 
is the trigeminal nerve, and it's a mix of both sensory and motor nerves. So what you're gonna do is cranial nerve number five, you're gonna take an open hand and you're gonna put it against the side of your face. Now what this does is it helps to remind you because the trigeminal nerve, like the name, tri, has three different branches. It has the ophthalmic branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. The ophthalmic branch is up here on your forehead, so it's like the, your fingers, and it just deals with sensory information for this part of your head. The maxillary branch is gonna be on this part of your hand right here, and it brings sensory information from your teeth and also just this portion of your face. The mandibular branch is on, it follows your mandible, and it brings sensory information from the bottom of your teeth, and it also innervates the muscles that help with mastication. Remember, mastication is another word for chewing. So you take your open hand, put it on the side of your face. It helps you remember the ophthalmic branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. Cranial nerve number six, the abducens. So this muscle deals with abducting the eyes laterally. So only one is innervated at a time. So you draw your eyes laterally. That's what this nerve does, is it innervates the muscles that pull your eyes to the side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these two fingers and you're also gonna take your thumbs. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of put them together like this. And then you're just going to pretend to like pull your eyes to the side. So again, pulling your eyes to the side, the abducens nerve innervates muscles that draw your eyes laterally. And this one is only a motor nerve. When I see your face. Cranial nerve number seven is the facial nerve. Like Andy said in class, this one's really important because as this one is a mixed nerve, so it has both sensory and motor components. The motor components deal with controlling the facial muscles and the salivary glands. The sensory component deals with the taste receptors on the anterior two-thirds of your tongue. Remember in class, it detects sweet flavors. So again, facial nerve deals with the facial muscles, salivary glands, and taste on the anterior two-thirds of your tongue that controls sweet taste. So the hand sign for this one, where you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers like this, kind of like making a seven, and you're going to put it underneath your jaw to help you remember the salivary glands because a lot of people tend to forget about the salivary glands when they talk about the facial nerve. So salivary glands, then you're going to take an open hand and you're going to put it over your face to help remember facial nerve controls all the muscles there. Cranial nerve number eight is the vestibulocochlear nerve. This one is purely sensory and it has two branches. It has the vestibular branch, which goes and attaches to the vestibules inside your ear, and it deals with balance and equilibrium. The cochlear branch goes to your cochlea and deals with detecting sound. This is the one that Andy's having problems with. So his vestibular branch is perfectly fine, but his cochlear branch is having problems. So his balance is fine, but he, he just can't hear out of his right ear. So the hand sign for this one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take eight fingers like this, and you're just gonna put them over your ears like this to help remember, like to deal with hearing. Also, if you want to help remember the equilibrium portion, you can take your hand and kind of move your head around like this to help remember that it deals with balance as well. Cranial nerve number nine is the glossopharyngeal nerve. And this one, again, has sensory and motor components. The motor components control movement of the posterior third of the tongue, so the back of the tongue. It also helps your throat when dealing with swallowing. So it controls the back of your tongue, swallowing, and it also has control over the parotid gland. That's a gland here in your cheek. So again, motor, back of your tongue, swallowing, parotid gland. The sensory component deals with sensing taste on the back of your tongue and it detects bitter flavors. So again, remember um, number seven, the facial nerve dealt with tasting the um, anterior two thirds of your tongue for sweet. Number nine, the glossopharyngeal deals with the back, of your, back third of your tongue and it tastes for bitter flavors. 
and also it controls the carotid sinus. I think you guys have learned about this in your labs, and if not, we will talk about why this is why the carotid sinus is important. But yeah, so the sensory portion, bitter tasting, and the carotid sinus. And what you're gonna do for this one, this one's kind of weird, so bear with me. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take an open hand and you're going to put it around your throat to help remember the carotid sinus and swallowing. Then you're going to take your four fingers and don't actually do this because you'll probably throw up, but you're going to pretend to touch, try to touch the back of your tongue, so like that. Again, it's kind of weird, but it helps. So cranial nerve number nine, wrap around, pretend like you're touching the back of your tongue. Cranial nerve number 10 is the vagus nerve. Now a couple things to note about this nerve is that first of all, it's the longest nerve in your body and it also is the only nerve to leave your general head area and go to your abdominal organs. So this is a mixed nerve, so it has both sensory and motor components. The motor component of the vagus nerve deals with innervation of the visceral organs parasympathetically. So what that means is for every organ except organs involved with digestion are calmed down or suppressed. However, with the digestive system, it works opposite. So when they're parasympathetically innervated, your digestive system is allowed to start digesting food. It's called the rest and digest stage. It also, the vagus nerve also controls your pharynx and your larynx. So yeah, controls visceral organs and your pharynx and your larynx. The sensory component conveys sensory information from your visceral organs to your brain. So pretty simple, down and back. The hand signal for this nerve, you're gonna take 10 fingers like this and I'm gonna back up a little bit. Something that kind of helps me remember this is when you go to Vegas, you wanna show off your body, right? So you take your hands and vagus nerve, you're gonna show off your body. You're gonna pretend to like show off your body. So yeah, vagus nerve, Cranial nerve number 10 goes to your body. I will like a wealthy woman's neck. Cranial nerve number 11 is the accessory nerve. Now this one is kind of weird because it has two different origins, I guess you could say. So it, like, it has like two heads. The first head comes from the brain. The second one comes from the spinal cord. Now each of these different heads kind of does a different thing but they kind of merge together before they divide again, so that's why they're called a single nerve. So what the um, root from the brain does is it goes and it controls your pharynx and helps with swallowing. So the cranial branch goes to your pharynx, deals with swallowing. The spinal branch goes to your trapezius muscle and to your sternocleidomastoid muscle and helps innervate them. So with the trapezius muscle, if you use your accessory nerve to innervate it, it kind of brings your shoulders up, and then it would also activate the sternocleidomastoid and turn the head. An easy way to remember the name of this nerve is accessory nerve, deals with kind of your neck. You wear accessories over your neck, like a necklace. So accessory nerve, accessories, kind of this area. So my hand signal for this one is to take one finger and what I like to do is to help remember the sternocleidomastoid, I like to start at the mastoid process. And what I do is I come down, I kind of circle my trapezius, the top portion of it at least, and then I come through, I come and I circle my clavicle to again remember the sternocleidomastoid. And then I also come up and I go around my throat just to help remember that it deals with swallowing. And then I go back up. So accessory nerve, trapezius, sternocleidomastoid, swallowing. Cranial nerve number 12 is the hypoglossal. This nerve is purely a motor nerve and it deals with moving your tongue and the muscles around your tongue. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two fingers like this, you're going to put them on either side of your mouth and then you're going to stick your tongue out and kind of move it between the two and try to touch it to each finger, like this. And again, that's to help you remember that it has to deal with the motor components of the tongue. It's the final 
All right, so we're gonna run them through all again, all together. So, cranial nerve number zero, detecting pheromones. Cranial nerve number one, olfactory, dealing with smell. Cranial nerve number two, optic, dealing with sight. Uh, cranial nerve number three, oculomotor, deals with moving the muscles of the eye. Cranial nerve number four, the trochlear, again, deals with moving the eyes down and lateral. Cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal, has the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular branches, and they deal with sens sensory portions and also the motor components of the jaw. Cranial nerve number six, the abducens, pulls your eyes laterally. So yeah, six fingers, pulls your eyes laterally. Cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve, deals with salivary glands and the muscles of the face. Cranial nerve number eight, the vestibulocochlear branch, or the vestibulocochlear nerve, deals with hearing and equilibrium and balance. Cranial nerve number nine, the glossopharyngeal, deals with swallowing and detecting taste on the back third of your tongue, bitter. Cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve, goes to your body, shows off, show off your body. Cranial nerve number 11, the accessory, deals with the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius and the pharynx with swallowing. And then lastly, cranial nerve number 12 deals with the motor units of your tongue. So it allows your tongue to move. All right, that's all I have for you guys. I hope that this helped. I hope it makes it a little bit easier to remember everything that all of these nerves do. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. I'm more than happy to help you and let me know if there's anything else I can do for you guys. See you in class.